dear all i would like to welcome you all in the lecture series of sensors and transducers in the last session i have discussed the importance of operational amplifier how the operational amplifier act as a signal conditioning device now i am going to discuss the various application of operational amplifier so before that i request everyone to recall what we discussed in the last session i think the screen is visible to everyone so let me discuss the important applications of operational amplifier as you can able to observe the following are the basic applications of op amp inverter adder subtractor differentiator multiplier or divider integrator then buffer amplifier ultimately differential amplifier we have to discuss the application individually let's get started now i am going to ask one question how does operational amplifier act as an inverter what is the purpose of inverter so you are applying one input voltage then you will be getting the phase shift of 180 degree output so input and output will be 180 degree out of phase that is the purpose of inverter let us discuss how op amp act as an inverter you know op amp has two inputs one is non inverting terminal another one is called inverting terminal you need to connect one input resistance at the inverting terminal and there should be a feedback resistance at the inverting terminal we should be connected to the output that means that's why it is called as feedback resistor feedback okay feedback resistor rf while designing do take care rf must be equal to r1 therefore what is a gain so you know that v not divided by v in is equal to minus of rf by r1 so output voltage is equal to we can write minus v i n into r of by r1 so instead of v i n i can put v1 so minus v1 into r of by r1 correct no you already design like r of is equal to r1 therefore v not is equal to minus v1 what does it mean v not is equal to minus v1 that means output is inverted with respect to the input i think you understood how op amp act as an inverter so please make a note of this now i am going to discuss the remaining application for the time being kindly note down how the op amp act as an inverter very simple from the gain formula you can easily derive second application how does op amp act as an adder you can observe these are the different input voltage v1 v2 v3 these are the input resistance r1 r2 r3 so this is your feedback resistor we have inverting terminal this is your non inverting terminal non inverting terminal v0 will be the output voltage okay first of all we have to apply the output so output is given by output voltage is equal to anyway it's a inverting amplifier it will act as an inverting amplifier because it is connected to minus negative terminal feedback is connected to negative terminal so it will act as a inverting terminal inverting amplifier therefore output voltage can be collectively written as negative of minus r r of by r1 into v1 plus r of by r2 into v2 r of by r3 into v3 while designing you made one condition what is the condition the r1 equal to r2 is equal to r3 is equal to feedback resistor 
am i right okay therefore r of by r1 that will get cancelled that will be getting cancelled r of by r2 is also will be getting cancelled r of by r3 also will be getting cancelled the rest of the term is v0 is equal to minus of v1 plus v2 plus v3 so you are going to add three input voltage which you have given at the inverting terminal so in this context operational amplifier act as an adder if you are having any queries please let me know hope you have noted down another important discussion when do you say that op amp act as a subtractor so here we require two circuit this is your first op amp stage first one another one is called second op amp these are the two op amp which are required so we have the feedback resistor op amp 1 we can say rf rf is the feedback resistor op amp 2 of course rf is another feedback resistor here r1 is the input resistor of op amp 1 and uh, you can see r3 the combination of r3 and r2 that is applicable for op amp 2 now we can apply the rule you know the basics of the gain of inverting amplifier same principle is applied over there so output voltage v not is equal to minus should be there no minus of minus v1 into r of by r1 not only that into r of by r3 so this one also you have to consider plus v2 into r of by r2 while designing you made one condition r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r3 is equal to r of so if you solve in the above equation if you apply the same equation in the above definitely will be getting v not is equal to v1 minus v2 okay this particular circuit is generally known as subtractor circuit so once again you can go through there are two stages okay so stage 1 and stage 2 stage 1 and stage 2 here you have to apply the condition like uh, v not is equal to this condition you have to apply later anyway you are while designing the feedback resistor is equal to input resistor then uh, ultimately you will be getting v not is equal to v1 minus v2 that is nothing but the difference between uh, the input so op amp acts as a subtractor next application multiplier and divider op amp act as a multiplier and a divider when op amp will act as multiplier and divider we'll have a brief discussion so consider the circuit this circuit you can make it as a multiplier or divider r1 that is a input resistor rf is the feedback resistor inverting terminal non inverting terminal output voltage so we can write output voltage output voltage is equal to negative of r of by r1 into v1 correct this is a general formula suppose if you make the value of feedback resistor higher than input resistor then the op amp act as a multiplier conversely if the value of r of v is less than r1 suppose if the input resistance is opposite manner we can say input resistor is higher than the feedback resistor then uh, the particular circuit will, will act as a divider so uh, the value of r of and r1 plays crucial role here whether the circuit act as a multiplier or divider correct this type of circuit is known as voltage multiplier or divider so we can have a note of this do understand by designing uh, you should be very much careful about the value of r of and r1 next is how does op amp act as an integrator first you familiar the circuit of integrator in the in case of indirect integrator we require a capacitor as a feedback element okay you know r is a input resistor we have inverting terminal non inverting terminal and here there is a junction you can see this is a junction junction or you can call it as a node okay v not is the output voltage here uh, in order to get the output voltage in order to get the integrator output 
we need to know how to apply Kirchhoff's current law. So at this particular node, the IN will be equal to IC. The total current entering to the junction will be equal to the total current leaving from the junction. So how to calculate IN? So you can calculate IN now by considering two voltage and resistor. Obviously, you can calculate IN. That is V minus minus V1 by resistor. That is equal to how to calculate the uh, capacitor current IC is equal to general formula I will be writing C dV by dt now. C dV by dt. Same formula you are supposed to apply here. If I apply the same formula C into two voltage you have to consider. V means differential voltage. V naught minus V, v negative. Correct no? At a different infinity differential gain we consider V negative V or V minus will be treated as zero. By applying the condition, uh, if you, you have to apply, v, this will be zero. V minus V, this part will be zero. One minute. You have to substitute accordingly. Here, what you are supposed to do is V minus that we consider as a zero. Here also, it will be zero. So, remaining elements will be minus V1 by R is equal to C into D by D of V naught. From this, you have to separate the value of V naught. V naught will be, uh, we can write it as V naught is equal to 1 by minus 1 by RC into integral of V1 uh, dt. So here, uh, directly you can write like this, D V naught by dt is equal to minus V1 by RC, right? So you have to take the integral at the both, both side. So V naught is equal to, it become minus uh, 1 by RC into integral of V1 into dt, like that. So this is the way how to get the output of integrator. So you have to understand the circuit. There is a feedback capacitor. Then apply the KCL. From that, you have to separate the value of output voltage. Likewise, there is another circuit that is called differentiator. Here, the thing is, the resistor will act as a feedback element. So, the input side will be providing the capacitor. Same condition at this node, consider this node. The IC will be equal to IR. Current through the capacitor will be equal to the current through the resistor. Entering current will be equal to the leaving current. IR, you can see the direction of IR and IC. Now, how to calculate IC? C dV by dt. So, I'll be applying C into d by dt of V minus minus V1. V minus actually the volt, one, one, one voltage at one terminal. V1 is voltage at another terminal. That is equal to how to calculate IR? V0 minus V, v minus divided by R. You know that uh, at a differential gain, uh, v minus will be equal to zero. Substitute the same equation over here. Here you can substitute. Then minus c into d by dt of v1 is equal to uh, v naught by r. So you separate the value of, you can separate the value of v naught. That is nothing but r will come to other side. RHS or LSS, no issue. Simplify you by using your own logic. Minus rc into d by dt of v1. This type of circuit is known as differentiator. I think it's clear to everyone. Okay. Now buffer amplifier. Buffer amplifier, it is a, it's also known as voltage follower. Okay. Whatever the output voltage, that follows input. So buffer amplifier will very essentially used as impedance transformer, which converts voltage at high impedance to the same voltage at a low impedance. So the gain will be unity. If you take the ratio of output to the input, that will be unity only. The usage, the usage of unity gain buffer amplifiers are greatly reduces the loading effect for the measurement system. Okay. So to minimize the loading effect, we do use, we do prefer buffer amplifier. That is one of the application of buffer amplifier. It is also known as voltage follower. Uh, the circuit diagram, you can see very clearly. See, uh, the, there is a non-inverting terminal. The inverting terminal that is directly connected to the output. Therefore, V0 by V1 will be equal to 1. 
output follows the input. Also, it's suitable for measurement system. So let us talk about another application, differential amplifier. So here you can see the output voltage. So output voltage, output voltage is proportional to the difference between two input voltage, V2 minus V1. So this type of circuit is generally known as differential amplifier. The output voltage of the amplifier is proportional to the difference between uh, two input voltages. The main purpose of uh, differential amplifiers are uh, it is uh, mainly used for reducing the noise and uh, is another, applica another application it can be used in various communication circuits. The advantages are noise immunity, also drift immunity. These are the major advantages of differential amplifier. So we have discussed the various applications of operational amplifier. Uh, let me know if you are having any questions related to this topic. So in your examination, you can expect some kind of questions like to explain the applications of operational amplifier or individually, how does operational amplifier act as an integrator? How does operational amplifier act as a voltage follower? Like that, some kind of questions can be expected. So further questions can be put up in the comment box. I'm very happy to answer. Uh, finally, I would like to thank you for listening this uh, video. Thank you for watching this video. Happy learning. Have a good time.